Real life, real people, real stories. It's time to acknowledge people in the community. Each week, come along and take a look into the lives of some extraordinary people. See how a story of a complete stranger can be so similar to your own. Hi, Attorney Al Parisi. Real life, real stories, real people. Today you will learn about Ricky Hunley. Ricky Hunley worked at a national uh, chain and worked his way all the way up to the regional manager of one of this country's leading um, corporations. And you will learn that Ricky Hunley did it because he was the person in life who didn't have the hookup. Today we have uh, the honor of having Ricky here. And Ricky, um, it really is an honor because um, you've explained uh, uh, to me on numerous occasions in terms of uh, what it takes to rise up in an inner city to uh, today um, being the regional manager for a major uh, corporation uh, in, in America. And I'd, I'd like to just share some of those uh, stories. Can you, can, can you explain to me, where did you grow up, Ricky? Uh, I grew up in Buffalo, New York, born and raised, and um, been there since the age of 25. And uh, got my roots through there, through my parents, and then uh, migrated here to Rochester. And tell me a little bit about um, what it was like, how many brothers and sisters, and what it was like growing up. Um, youngest of four, um, two brothers, I'm sorry, one, two sisters, and um, obviously me. So I had two sisters and one brother. And um, it wasn't, we had a uh, pretty good household, you know, parents were married well over 25 years until my dad's death back in 2010. Um, but pretty good household, grew up in the church life, um, but one of the main obstacles that we had growing up was living in the inner city. You know, there was a lot of crime going on and stuff like that, so that was kind of one of the biggest challenges growing up. And how was that, though, like a challenge for you? Explain to me, like, how, how, how that became a challenge um, in your life. Um, just because of what you see every day, you know, you see your friends, you know, you, even teenagers, you know, they kind of fall by the wayside by doing things that, uh, you know, your most parents aren't really proud of, you know, so, um, but to, to have a good role model in my dad and even in my mom, you know, as, as a, you know, a young teenager, uh, taught me a lot of right from wrong and, you know, I was always a consequences type person. So I always looked at, you know, before I make a decision, what are the consequences? So that, that was what something that, you know, kept me out of a lot of trouble growing up. And when you said you were always a consequences person, um, what do you mean by that in terms of, um, did you sometimes not think of the consequences and that, is that how you became a consequences person? Uh, to be honest with you, um, never. Like even just, like I said, most of my friends experience smoking weed, even to this day. You know, I'm 34 years old, never smoke weed, you know. And um, even as far as like going out socially, drinking and stuff like that, never done nothing, you know, irresponsible on my behalf. You know, I've always been kind of like the leader of the pack type person, never was a follower, and this is kind of in my DNA. So, but uh, just knowing my right from wrong. So, but I always put things into perspective to say, you know what, if I do this, this can happen. And that's kind of what just kept me away from doing those type of things. In today's uh, kids, you see so much, like say, whether it's the music, the movies, and things, you see kids being stripped of innocence. Right. Um, what was it um, uh, that you, or even you now as a dad, um, um, do you think parents um, need to say, hey, my kid may not understand what this word correlates to the type of drug in, in a song, or this... Right. Or this, what they're really talking about is a sexual act here, not a surfboard. Mm -hmm. um, those type of things, right? Mm -hmm. um, what is it that um, um, parents should do in terms of that innocence? In other words, is, is it okay for your kids to be innocent today, or are they going to get eaten up alive? Well, and that's true in some cases, and I do agree with what you're saying. I think that uh, in today's society, everything's different. Everything's digital now where, you know, if there's something that you don't know, you can just pick up your phone and, and get the answer right then and there. Um, but at the same time, it, it takes away from that communication barrier. So if there's things that I don't understand as a child, I can only go to my parent. I can just go in my room and check it on my phone. So I think that that was one of the things that I had when I was, you know, younger, where I didn't have to worry about Google or any of that other stuff. I just went to my parents and asked them. And um, you were so blessed to have a mom and dad um, there. 
Um, tell me what role or like in terms of what you saw from your friends uh, when the dads weren't there. Um, you saw a lot of anger. Um, I had a, you know, one of my closest, closest um, relatives, my cousin, we were like three months apart and he, he had a broken household and uh, his dad was, even though he was in his life, you know, not in the same household, but there was a lot of hurt there, you know, and I'm actually experiencing that myself with my son. He lives in Texas, so um, it was something that I, I never thought that would happen because the minute that I found out that um, my girlfriend at the time was um, you know, expecting, the first thing I did was I went straight to my dad's job and told him that I had a son on the way. And the first thing he said to me was, you know, you have a responsibility. And I, and I knew what that was. And um, tell me uh, what the uh, difficulties are, say, being a dad in today's society versus being a dad in, in your father's time? Like, how, how are the challenges different for you? Um, I would say it really depends on the person. I, I don't want to say that it's any different from what it was, you know, 30 years ago, but it really just depends on the person. You know, every, some people can step up to the plate to want to be a parent, and then there's some who shy away from it. I really don't have a, a you know, a difference between the two. And when you um, grew up in the, in, the, in the inner city of uh, Buffalo, when you mentioned uh, step up to the plate, um, you saw plenty of dads who didn't. I did. And um, uh, something in you, primarily that you had a role model who stayed at the plate no matter what through hard times and good times. Right. And um, uh, what you decided you were going to be a stay at the plate dad? Yeah, just because I had an example set ahead of me. You know, uh, my brother, he's the same way. He's a father of four. He's still married to his wife. And that's just kind of how we want to be as, as men, especially raising young men. You know, you want to make sure that um, you never want to shy away from the opportunity to, to affect someone's life. And what do you say, though, to that boy out there um, who might not have um, that male uh, role model in his life? find someone to latch on to, you know, it could be um, a neighbor, it could be um, a relative, it could be an uncle, it could be um, they're your barber, you know, it could, be, it could be anyone that you can latch on to. It doesn't necessarily have to be a male, but if you know, if you can find a male figure to, to step up to and not be afraid to, you know, pour your heart out to them, that would be the, the steps that I would take. And when you say um, uh, pour your heart out, uh, to him. When you found out um, you were going to be a dad, you were how old? I was 20. And um, did you then like pour your heart out to your dad? I wouldn't say that I poured my heart out, but um, it definitely caused me to be um, to mature a lot quicker than what I wanted to. Um, you know, at that time, you know, of course, there was the party and stuff like that, but there was it was still never nothing harsh to where. I needed a reality check, you know, which is more so I made a mistake, now I have to own up to my mistake and, you know, take responsibility for, you know, what I, what I had. And um, uh, today you're a dad of two children, is that right? I have two sons, um, but, I, but I'm now married for, it'll be five years on May 5th, but um, I have a 20-year-old stepson um, and a 16-year-old stepson, but I don't like to call them my stepsons because I've been in their life for almost nine years now. So, um, but uh, there's four boys. And you've stepped up uh, in all their lives and tried to be a role model? Oh, of course, most definitely. Now, you're 20 years old, you have a son. Um, how is it that you go from there to being the regional manager um, of a company? In other words, how do you um, continue uh, with your career through that? Um, very simple. Like I said before, like just from seeing what my dad and my mom, the foundation that they've led, um, I was kind of like one of those type of people that was always um, just goal driven. And I started out um, wanting to be a, um, a basketball official. So when I was, you know, I turned 21 and I had my little guy, I was uh, refereeing high school basketball out of Buffalo. 
And I did that for several years and was going to camps and I had aspirations to make it to the NBA just as far as being a, uh, an official. Um, but I realized that, you know, that's a seasonal job at the high school level. You know, I couldn't really, you know, make a, a, a good living off of that. So um, I decided to um, try retail because I've never done it. I've had a lot of odd jobs, but uh, I wind up going to Foot Locker. And um, they, just from the interview that I had, the manager at the time, she pretty much, um, she saw something in me. And she said that, you know, you can be a store manager. And I said, well, listen, I didn't finish college, you know, like, I really don't know. So she was like, no, she's like, you can, you can, you can be a store manager. So um, I, would, I stopped refereeing right then and there, and I, I went full throttle at the retail business because I felt like it was something new and it was a challenge to me. And, and um, it, she believed in you at that point in time more than you believed even in yourself. She did. And, and, and it took a person like that. Right. And, and, and how is it then um, that you go um, on with your career to where you are now in terms of a regional manager? How does that, how does that occur? Well, I call it a blessing in disguise. Um, just, you know, just from everything that was going on in my life at the time, um, it was just kind of one of those things where I knew that I couldn't give up. And I knew that I, I couldn't let, you know, everything that had, I had a setback in that time frame where I actually lost my job and I was behind in my child support. So it was just kind of one of those things where I knew that I had to work twice as hard to one, get myself out of the arrears, and two, you know, continue to just be, you know, the dad that my son wanted me to be. So in the midst of me working extra hard, I kind of got noticed. So I got my first promotion within the first four months of employment with Foot Locker. So I went from four months to getting promoted to another four months getting promoted to a bigger store. And then, you know, six months later, I was promoted to store manager to move to Rochester, New York. And, and, and how is it like that you decided, uh, you see so many kids today are presented with um, a quick road to cash, you know, a quick road to quote making it right, and mm -hmm. and they'll go down that road and it'll, and it'll end in disaster. What was it like in you that never like took the quick road? <laughs> um, I'm laughing because I always think about, especially in the business that I'm in, with you know selling sneakers and clothes and stuff like that, and you know a lot of even here in Rochester, a lot of people are they always relate me to to not being the hookup guy, so. It's kind of one of those things where, again, the consequences that I knew that I could lose my job if I went the wrong way. So to stay on that straight and narrow path and just kept pressing forward, I think that that was really my, my ammunition to kind of keep me, to keep me going. And it's funny that you say that because exactly right. Everybody loves, whether you're working at Dairy Queen, McDonald's, oh, don't worry, this guy, quote, has the hookup, right? right? Like right. everybody, you know, loves that guy and it's an instant gratification kind yeah. of thing, right? right. But, but knowing that, wait a minute, this might be doing wrong by my employer takes another step. Right, I agree. And what was it that um, um, uh, today you're out there doing um, back to school drives, you're out there doing, what is the, the thing that you feel towards the inner city kids at Buffalo and Rochester, like that kind of is the, your burning desire, you know, to try to rise up to the level of your dad in terms of being a role model in the community? Well, well first off, it's just, just the opportunity at Villa, you know, coming to Rochester. I, I did some research on the company um, one of my former co-workers, when I was at Full Locker, she told me that, hey, Villa's coming to Rochester. So I'm like, well, what's Villa? So I did my research and I, and I definitely found it to be very interesting as far as like how they go into the inner cities and how they like to give back. And all I can think of at the time was that, you know, the company I'm at now, they don't, they don't really care for that stuff. You don't see them doing community service events on a bigger scale, obviously, but not in the smaller markets. Um, but I definitely liked the opportunity because I had tons of ideas of things that I wanted to do, you know, within our city. So um, after doing the research, you know, obviously had the interview mm -hmm. and then um, aced the interview, got the job on the spot. And, and what is it about uh, giving back to the very community kind of from which you've come mm -hmm. that makes you feel so good? Because I was a part of the community, you know, I, even though I wasn't born here in Rochester, I was still a product of the inner city youth. So I think that, you know, when the, the summer 
summer school programs. When I was in my summer school, but like the, they call them like the vacation Bible school programs. I did that and like just kind of like the, the free lunch program for the, for the summer, you know, did that. And, you know, I, I, was, I was a part of all that. So to, to be a part of a corporation that actually says that we want to help those type of um, initiatives, why not want to be a part of it? And what do you say to that young dad, though, who um, uh, he's, you know, 18 years old, 19 years old, 20 mm -hmm. years old. Um, he has a kid and um, uh, he feels as though I didn't graduate from college. He feels as though, you know, oh, great. It sounds great. I hear all these people mm -hmm. with these inspirational things. Right. Um, uh, how do I become that guy? How do I get up out of it? What do you say to that kid? Um, there's a few things that I say and things that I, that I, you know, I try to go by is, you know, you got to have prayer in your life and you have to prepare and you have to perform. You know, with those three P's, to me, I feel like those are the only way that you can kind of get yourself out of whatever instance you may be in. And uh, so a lot of times you've turned uh, to God in prayer when those situations even presented themselves to you? Right. Back when in 2010, when I, I lost my dad, um, not even two weeks after, you know, his funeral and everything, that's when I got my promotion to relocate to Rochester. So obviously it was, it, the prayer was definitely there. I knew that my time was coming to get a um, promotion. I didn't know that it would be out of the, the area code, but it was one of those things where um, I took a leap of faith and, and just, you know, I wanted to go out and, and show that everything that I've learned, you know, through life and through through my job that, you know, I can kind of like, you know, put it on the table and, and, and show my employers that I can perform. What, what, do you, what do you say to those young dads? You can't give up. And I guess the most important thing that I've learned is that it's never the child's fault, you know. It definitely takes, you know, the, the, the adults, the parents, if you will, you know, it, it, they have to figure out a way. I think that most people get um, turned off by the fact that the, the dad no longer likes the mom or the mom no longer likes the dad. You know, even in those situations, if that should happen, you, you know, you still should be a part of your child's life because, you know, you hear too many stories where these kids are growing up motherless and fatherless because the other parent just chooses not to be in their life. You know, so I would. And, and I do understand, though, in terms of, say, a young dad, right? You lose mm -hmm. your job, you, you can't pay, you know, dollar bills, right, into, mm -hmm. the, in, into his care. You can't buy him a new pair of sneakers, right? Which every right. dad wants to do for their kid. Who right. doesn't, right? right. Um, um, but what do you do when you're in a situation where, though, you still have to make the decision, even though, say, I haven't paid, you know, two weeks of child support or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. I still am going to show up to, at his door on Saturday, ring the doorbell, mm -hmm. and take him to go shoot hoops. Right. Like, you see what I mean? Like, what does that take? Like I said, to me, it goes back to the person. I mean, I would love to, to sit down with everyone's story. I mean, but to me, it all depends on, on do you want to be a parent, you know? And I think that the moment that I found out that I had a son on the way, you know, it was it was almost kind of like a like I took it as a challenge to not be that statistic, you know. So um, I think that that was definitely something that motivated me. And I think that you know the kids today, if if you're in that same situation, I would definitely use it as a challenge. And 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 force yourself to um, man up to that challenge, no matter how hard it may be. Correct. Wow, it's been a real uh, joy having you here. Uh, you're a great dad and a real source of inspiration on so many different levels. Thank you so much, Ray. Right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.